Huh, Dragon Power. Hmm, it sounds familiar. But hey, this is a first for the Donators Marathon, an NES game. We're going deep into the past here. And it's been some time since I dusted off the old top loader, so let's pop this in. Damn, 1986. This game's older than I am. This story begins ages ago, deep inside the mountains, far, far away from the city. G Goku and Nora's story starts with their trip to find seven crystal balls, which grant their wish. Goku? Seven crystal balls? Dragon Power. Is this supposed to be a Dragon Ball game? Oh god, 1986? Shit, Dragon Ball wasn't even a blip on our radar here in America. Didn't think it was possible to be more obscure than the Harmony Gold dub of the Dragon Ball anime. Remember that? Hey, are you some kind of famous wise man or something? What's your name, anyway? I've been told many things. My favorite is Whiskers the Wondercat. So Dragon Power is in fact a localized version of the 1986 Dragon Ball title, Dragon Ball Shenron no Nazo, literally translated as Dragon Ball Mystery of a Divine Dragon. And unless I'm mistaken, I think this is the first Dragon Ball game to ever be released in America. If so, that's pretty cool, but again, this is a Dragon Ball game, and Dragon Ball as a franchise wouldn't take off in popularity here until Dragon Ball Z, and that was around the late 90s. Story-wise, it's based off the first couple of volumes of the original Dragon Ball manga, basically when we're introduced to Bulma and Goku and following their hunt for the Dragon Balls, along the way meeting Master Roshi, Yamcha, dealing with Emperor Pilaf, all that stuff. Not a bad idea to base a video game off of, the quest for the Dragon Balls was essentially a giant collectathon fetch quest, it was a solid basis. It's a shame that it ultimately isn't very interesting as far as adaptations go. Every cutscene, so to speak, is told through these static dialogue exchanges. They reference what they need to reference, Yamcha stealing the Dragon Balls, Master Roshi oozing blood out of his nose when he sees Bulma's panties, but there's so many of these accompanying what's mostly a top-down beat-em-up in some fashion that it cripples the game's pace. At the same time, though, I'm also aware it's a mid-80s NES title, and the fact that there are cutscenes at all could be seen as ambitious, but at the end of the day, it just isn't appealing to me. And what's going on with Bulma here? <laughs> or you can also go with... <laughs> now, what's really appealing to me here was the attempt at localization. Let's start with the cover. Maybe they consider the Japanese box art too cutesy or something, so instead of having our attention set it on the colorful cast of characters, we instead have this shot of a generic looking dragon alongside a generic looking kung fu master fighting to the death against these deadly bubbles. No, these are supposed to be the dragon balls, but I guess the translators thought they were referencing actual dragon testicles and instead called them the crystal balls this time. Bulma's name was changed to Nora, Master Roshi is simply a hermit, Oolong was changed to Pudgy, and Yamcha is now Lancer. Goku, on the other hand, is still Goku. Don't know why the fuck they decided to leave that one alone. But that didn't stop them from changing how he looks anyway. They got rid of his hair, gave him a white sweatband, and kind of looks like a Kung Fu Alex Kid, and I can't decide if that's an insult to Alex Kid or not. Some stages were also outright removed for the English release. After defeating Emperor Pilaf in Chapter 6, there's supposed to be this mini tournament arc where you fight Krillin, Yamcha, this guy, and Jabba the Hutt. But this was completely removed, and I, I don't know, I can't think of a reason why that is. Maybe they thought it was too hard to have the player go through a gauntlet of enemies, but if that's the case, they clearly did not play the second half of the game, which I'll get to later. I think my favorite of the changes concerns Master Roshi's perverted nature. You know how he was a total poon hound on this show, they really ran that joke into the ground, you can't miss it, surprised he doesn't have a restraining order actually, but obviously, you can't have an old man wanting a teenager's panty, so instead to get his crystal ball, Nora doesn't offer him a panty shot, but instead, burgers and sandwiches. And then this happens. Did we just witness a burger orgy? Localizations can be very weird at times, but you may be thinking as an actual game, what do we got here? Boy, wouldn't you like to know. As you can see, it's primarily a top-down beat-em-up. You control Goku through several stages, punching the shit out of bad guys of all flavors. Dog people, moblins from Zelda, flying jellyfish, racist black faces, it's got that all covered. Goku can punch in all four cardinal directions and jump, should you feel the need to do that. Occasionally, you can find these tiny capsules that went open, may possibly give you some extra health, a quick boost of speed next to worthless point bonuses, or maybe give you your power pole for extended reach in combat. You can even find these turtle shells that at first I had no fucking clue what these did. But these are in fact your Kamehamehas, or as the English version calls it the wind wave. Aim it just right and you can one shot almost anything except boss fights. Sounds like you're well suited for the giant ball hunt, you won't make it past the second stage without dying at least twice. Let's talk your power level, now that's not how strong you are, that's your health. It starts at a respectable 100, but it'll soon drain faster than the hermit with a Big Mac. 
Much like Link in Zelda 1, Goku's attack range is borderline pitiful and not graceful. You have to stop in place to attack all the time, and if you miss, you're free for the pick, and you can easily get dogpiled in this game, and Goku has little in invincibility frame, so in close quarters, damage will rack up tremendously fast. This game is full of that classic archaic jank. Slow down that can fuck with your inputs, projectiles that can come out of nowhere and blindside you, straight up bullshit scenarios like this. In one of the later chapters, Nora gets turned into a carrot by this ass, so when to help her out, you gotta collect four carrots. The stage has an ass load of doors that you have to check one by one, you know, you never know when there might be a carrot in there, but sometimes, as soon as you enter to the room, you get immediately hurt from these spiked clamps. What kind of shit is that? I've heard of beginner's traps, but the moment you enter the room? Boss fights, holy fuck, these are war of attrition at their finest. Kill them before they kill you, because... There's no strategy to these guys. Ox King fucks me up because it looks like you can clearly dodge under his axe throw. I mean, I could do it in Castlevania, could you blame me for thinking I can do that here? But that son of a bitch somehow still hits you even at a crouching stance. And Yamcha, I know everyone makes the joke, but... The next time someone asks you what Yamcha's spirit animal is, you don't say wolf, you say toad man. If you die, I'm sorry, when you die, you can choose to continue from the title screen to start at the beginning of the chapter you died in, so the game's at least merciful there, until after chapter 6, when you beat Emperor Pilaf's robot, you get to summon the dragon and make a wish. There's four total wishes here too, you can... Uh, animate the title screen if you want, alright. You can get a split second glimpse of the upcoming stages, and it's really a split second, check this out. I mean, did you catch any of that? You can also choose to get a permanent increase to your health, the one you should be picking, or you can witness Hermit's burger orgy again. From this point onward, you enter what's essentially the second half of the game, but now, if you die, your progress resets to chapter 7. Yes, that means if you miraculously get to say chapter 10 or 11 and bite it, you're back all the way to chapter 7. What the fuck? Why is the game suddenly stingy with continues? This game is next to impossible to finish because of this shit. At least earlier, I knew I had that safety net where if I didn't just make it, I can learn from my mistakes and try again at the start of the stage, but now the fucking game expects me to finish four stages in a row with one life. I'm sorry, that just ain't happening. I haven't even mentioned the biggest piece of bullshit that makes all of this worse. Your power meter there, that thing, your health, it's also your timer. Yeah, the fucking thing ticks down even when you're not doing anything. What the shit? I had to use a game genie to even finish this game. Let's put that in perspective for my sorry ass. I didn't use a game genie for Ghosts and Goblins, Zelda 2, all that other bullshit, because unless you put way more time into this game than necessary, you're not finishing it. There's too much up to chance after chapter six. Enemy behavior, item drops to keep you alive, your goddamn health. This requires damn near perfect play so that you don't take too much damage and don't waste too much time because again, your health is also your fucking timer. The Dragon Ball was dropped hard on this one. I mean, at least before the game was somewhat playable, then they just said, fuck it. So you know what? Fuck you too, game. I can bend the rules as well, bitch. Now to the person who donated this game to me, nevertheless, I do appreciate it. You know, bullshit or not, it was cool to experience the first Dragon Ball game released here in the West, but for now, I think I'll just stick to the fighting games. Speaking of, holy shit, Fighter Z is almost here. You bet your ass I'm gonna be playing the hell out of that game. And if I can, I'll even try to squeeze a review in when I get the chance. I've been looking forward to this for months, and it's been a while since I looked at Dragon Ball Z fighting games ever since I did the Budokai series. But that will be for a later time. Is this marathon suddenly being sponsored by Crunchyroll? Uh, all right. Well, next time I'll see you guys with Shonen Jump's Naruto Clash of Ninja.